Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about a blog post that came across that raised a very interesting point. Should you use IEnumerable to loop or IEnumerator? If you don't know what the difference is, I will explain in this video, but it's a very interesting idea. Is one better? Is one faster? Is one more memory efficient? The outcome on that blog post was that one was actually quite a bit faster in the microsecond world, but still faster. And that caught my eye because it shouldn't be. That's the exact code that this blog post had. You had a list of decimals over here with a bunch of product prices. And then you have this test I enumerable, which is using the I enumerable of the prices through an implicit conversion. And then it takes it down into a for each loop, which presumably will use that I enumerable and then iterate that enumerable. Or over here, it's going to get an enumerator out of that collection because a list has an enumerator. It is a method over here that is hanging off the list. Here we go. And then this returns a new enumerator. And then you get a move next method, which you can call in a while loop. And while you have more items in that enumerator, then give me the current and keep moving next and return until eventually you have nothing else to return and you return the sum. That's the difference. The enumerable is basically a collection of some form and the enumerator is instructions on how to enumerate that collection. Does this have more to be enumerated? I want to get the current value and so on. In fact, in terms of methods that the enumerator has, you have the current, you have the move next, and then you have the reset where you can reset the enumerator and then you can also dispose. But that wasn't done here. This There is no uh, price enumerator dot dispose call, which by the way, normally, if you use an enumerator through the loop, which is what this should be doing, it will dispose. In fact, if I just build this quickly and I go into the IL code over here, what you're going to see is that even the first example is actually using an enumerator. It's moving next. It's getting current. It adds. And then in the end, if the enumerator is not null, it disposes. So the two examples provided here are flawed by definition through that, but I'm going to run them as they are just because I want to show you how the two things compare. Actually, I'm going to stop it because the original post did not include a memory diagnoser tag. So if you don't have the memory diagnoser attribute, you won't actually see the difference in memory. And that wasn't actually mentioned in the post because I'm suspecting this one over here will have something to tell us. So let's just run this and let's see what we get back. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that this Dome Train's second birthday and we're celebrating with our biggest sale yet. Yes, bigger than Black Friday too. Until the 1st of May, you can use discount code BIRTHDAY2 at checkout for any of our 85 courses, any of our early discounted bundles, as well as Dome Train Pro and workshops where me and other authors teach you live a certain topic. We keep releasing courses. We have five courses released in the past month, including TypeScript, sending emails in .NET, as well as using AI and LLMs in your programming workflow to be more efficient and more productive. So you don't want to miss this sale. Link in the description. Now back to the video. Okay, so results are back. And let's see what we have here. So in my case, the two perform very, very similarly. Same memory allocation and same speed. Now that might be down to the CPU or the version of .NET that person was using. I'm not quite sure, but I'm getting the exact same thing, which is what I would expect with this type of code because they should behave roughly the same. Now I have an extra benchmark here, the one I wrote, which does the exact same thing roughly, uh, but it actually uses a, an integer and a long because I want to remove any sort of logic from the decimal type, which is a bit more complicated. So I'm going to just run that too, just to give you two different things with two different types. Because when you look at one type, sometimes you get blindsided and you don't see how this would work with different types. And the simpler the type, the more you will isolate the operation overhead and not just the summarization cost because it can actually load level the difference. So let's just wait and see how long these two things take to complete. Okay, so results are back and let's see what my benchmark brings back. So actually here, you're going to see there's a bit of a difference, quite the difference actually, three times slower on the I enumerator and some memory. Why is that? Well, because in my benchmark, I didn't actually think over here to capture that list in a parameter over here as was done in this example, because this will actually capture it and allocate it, which will waste memory and you really don't need to do it. So I'm going to go back to the original example and just remove that. So just iterate the product prices. I know why this was done, or at least my suspicion is if I just quickly 
uh, compile this and go to the IL code, that this would use the enumerable in some weird way for the operation because it's being casted um, as an enumerable over here and then enumerator. But the truth is, it's still going to be an enumerator both here and here. The, the logic behind the scenes is going to be the same. There's no reason for this thing to exist. So I'm going to just move this here and remove this allocation. Now, the other thing besides the disposal is that that person did not use the var keyword to showcase that, hey, I'm using an enumerator. So uh, that makes sense. But this is a very, very bad way to define an enumerator type because this will now allocate the enumerator every time this method is invoked, wasting those 40 bytes. Instead, what you should be doing is you know the type that you have here. It's a list of type decimal. So I'm going to take and place it here. And then because it has an enumerator, you can actually say dot enumerator and get the struct of enumerator here. And of course, now if I do var, it's the same type. It's the list of decimal dot enumerator. It's very, very optimized, actually. So if I do all that now and I run this original benchmark, so enumerator versus enumerable, then as you're going to see once this benchmark completes, then you'll see that there is practically no difference. The two things perform exactly the same within margin of error and there is no memory allocated. So that should have been, in my opinion, the outcome because ultimately the two things are the same. The only difference in the two examples is that in this one, that first one, Yes, you're going to have the enumerator, but you also have the try finally block, which does add a bit of overhead, but you don't actually have it here. By doing it manually, you're skipping that finally operation. If I was to have a one-to-one -one sort of thing, then we'll see that this actually starts on the while loop. So here you would say true and then finally. So if I move this here, then here I can say that if the price enumerator is not null, then well, I forgot the syntax, then dispose. And this does not work because it doesn't like the null conditional. Oh, because it won't be null because I have it from here and this does not return a nullable thing. Yeah, that is fine. So just for the sake of having a one for one comparison, just settling this debate once and for all, I'm going to let it run. And as you can see, the two perform basically exactly the same. There's no difference. It's the exact same code if you write your code properly. So don't worry about it. It's very rare you would write code like this. Like this is effectively the lowered version of what a loop or a for each loop in this case would do. There's a reason why we have this syntax because it's just way, way more elegant. Just use that. But now I wonder from you, what do you think about all this? And have you ever needed to write code like this for some use case I'm missing, but it should be obvious? Leave a comment down below, let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, keep coding.